high. Have you ever wanted to be valuable? Have you ever wanted to be sought after? Have you ever wanted to be loved? Have you ever wanted to be extremely scientifically valuable? Well, I know the answer to all your problems. You, my friend, need to become a fossil. But how do I become a fossil, you ask? That's crazy. Well, stick with me and I'll teach you how. My name's Luke and you're watching Paleontology Plus. This is not a tooth. It may look like a tooth. It may have the exact size, shape, and texture of the tooth from the ancient megalodon shark, but in fact, it's not. It's a rock. Well, not exactly a rock. It's, it's a fossil. And fossils are not teeth. They are not bones. Fossils are something altogether different. And to see why, we'll have to go back and learn where the word fossil comes from. The word fossil actually comes from the Latin word of fossus, that word meaning dug up. It could mean really anything that came from the ground, from a mammoth tooth to a weird looking rock, to even a potato. What? in 1736, the word was used in a more formal manner to mean any sort of geological representative of the remains of animals or plants. And then in 1859, the word fossil was first used as a slang term for an old person. But what we're concerned with now is the more formal usage of the word fossil, that meaning the remains of plants or animals that have been petrified or turned to stone. And like that implies, it's not really the remains of the animals at all that we're looking at, it's evidence left by the remains of these animals. It's not the teeth or the bones, it's the markings that these teeth and bones left in the ground. But how does that happen? So the first thing you need to do if you want to live out your lifelong goal of becoming a fossil is die. Now, that may seem kind of obvious, but it's really not. You can't just die in any old way. You can't get eaten or fall off a tree and get trampled by horses or whatever. You need to die in a very specific way in a very specific place. Because as abundant as fossils may seem, they're really quite rare. And the vast majority of animals that die never actually become fossils. So does that mean all I have to do is bury a bone and wait for it to become a fossil? I'm afraid that's not going to cut it either. See, for fossilization to occur, not only do you need to be buried, but you need to be completely sealed off very quickly from the elements like air or water that could just destroy you before you became a fossil. You see, as the sediment around your body gets pressed and squeezed by all the pressure being built up by itself, it begins to harden in a process known as lithium. Lithification. During lithification, the sediment begins to expel liquids and become harder and harder until it's pure rock. Now, during this lithification process, your body is most likely going to be destroyed. It'll be squashed, crushed, scattered, whatever. But sometimes, if you're lucky, your hard parts might remain. Those hard parts being teeth, bones, any sort of shell or anything that might survive the lithification process. Now, these hard parts don't survive forever. Eventually, they're going to decay too. But if the conditions are right, your bones and hard parts will decay a lot slower, molecule by molecule. And as one molecule decays and floats away into the unknown, a new molecule, one of rock, one of lithified sediment that has been surrounding your body, will be pulled into its place. This will happen for every molecule over hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of years until every single molecule of yours has been replaced perfect, a perfect copy by the stones pulled from the sediment. And that is where a fossil comes from. 
Of course, that's just the mainstream, cool way of becoming fossilized. There are many more, uh, more obscure ways of becoming preserved for millions of years, if that's more your style. For example, you might recognize this if you've seen Jurassic Park. It's a little fossilized fly trapped in amber. He's been there since the Cretaceous period, trapped almost perfectly preserved in this exact position. For this to happen, an insect, lizard, or other small animal needs to get stuck in tree resin, which will then harden and, if we're lucky, fossilize and get preserved for millions of years. Amber can give us incredible detail, preserving an animal's entire body, soft parts, delicate wings, and even the internal organs and contents of the stomach. Plus, it's absolutely beautiful. However, if you're wanting to get preserved for millions of years, I'm afraid amber isn't the most practical option. If you're a normal-sized human, you're probably much too big to get stuck in a drop of amber. Now, you could just make a fossil imprint. Those are some of the most common fossils, and you don't even really have to die. All you need to do is, say, lay face down in a batch of sediment for as long as it takes to lithify a couple hundred, couple thousand years to make an impression of yourself instead of actually fossilizing the bones. And then, after it's all hardened, you can just walk away. Of course, you could also leave some coprolites. Coprolites, that is, fossilized dung. Fossilized dung is some of the most interesting and scientifically valuable fossils we can get about a species, as they can tell us what they ate and how they ate it. They're very valuable and very easy for you to make. Now, like I said earlier, most animals who die don't fossilize. Bill Bryson says in his book, A Short History of Nearly Everything, it's estimated that about one in every billion bones actually turns into a fossil. So really, you don't have a good chance of fossilizing no matter what you do. But there are different ways to make an imprint on the future. We humans, as animals, aren't very good at fossilizing. But there are other things we're good at, other ways you can make an impression on the future. For instance, we're good at art, science, singing, politics, we're good at making videos, we're good at making discoveries. There's a lot of ways that you can make an impact on the future without specifically having to fossilize yourself. And, you know, that's pretty cool. Or, you know, you could just jump into a mudslide and hope that you fossilize, which you might. That's still an option. You can still do that, but it's probably not going to happen. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. My name's Luke, and thank you for watching Paleontology Plus.